praise God, praise God, praise Him, happy Tuesday, happy day of labor, I welcome you, worship, may you feel at church, uh, we shall humble ourselves and have a word of prayer, our most precious heavenly father, we come in thy presence, we thank you Lord for the gift of life. We thank you, Father, for the blessings that you've always given unto us every new day. As we've gathered here today to worship you, we call upon you to come and be in our midst. Father, make us a blessing in all that we shall be doing. For we pray all this in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, we shall... Uh, we shall start our service with him five to four. Him five to four. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. to be in the house of the Lord. It's nice to be in the house of the Lord. Okay, we shall sing him 554 or let me walk with thee.
shall sing him five to nine under his wing. We shall sing him 15, My Maker and My King.
word shall we say? Indeed, amen. Uh, we shall sing hymn 181. Does Jesus care? Ask us to sing the chorus with joy, fulfilling that really God, Jesus, cares as the Mazda Choir comes up front to praise the Lord with a special song. When the days are wet. 
Good evening, members. Good evening. I welcome everyone to this place for our week of prayer. And I also welcome the online congregation. Thank you for sparing your time to come and listen to God's words. I know our ever kind and loving God is going to bless us mightily. He's going to listen to our prayers and he's listening to our prayers. And he's happy when we come in his house. I welcome our serving choir. Today we are blessed with a very mighty choir. It is coming to us from Makere University Seventh day Adventist Association. Musda. Yes. And I also welcome our pianist, Dr. Jonathan Chikanga. Thank you for serving. May God continue to bless you and to use you. The choristers, Teddy Nasolo and her team, may God continue to bless you and to use you. And also welcome our the camera team, the crew behind there. I know your efforts are not in vain. The Lord is rewarding you and God is saying and I thank you and I pray that the Lord continues to bless you. This is day three of our week of prayer. The youth week of prayer which is being led by the youth department and my name is John Alex Kalanzi. I am happy and honored to be serving you today, this evening. And I'm not serving alone. I'm serving with my sister from Musda, Sister Charity Chitui. I request, I request her, her to wave to, to, wave the, congregation. to the congregation. Thank you for Thank accepting, you for accepting to, serve. to serve. May the Lord, good Lord, the good Lord bless you. Lord bless you. We know we who, know our, who preacher, our preacher for this, for entire, this week entire week is. He is, he our, is very our very own, our associate, our associate at Kampala, at Kampala A, District. A District. And, and Musda Musda Chaplain, Chaplain, former Chaplain, former, 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 many, former things. many things. We praise we the Lord, praise for, the your Lord for your life. We thank we you, thank for, you accepting for accepting to serve. To serve. The person I'm talking about is called Pastor Justus Perez. And when his time comes, I know the Lord is going to use him mightily. I once again welcome you for this fellowship. And I request you to continue reminding your friends to come and join us. And if, if they don't happen to be able to do that, to remind them to tune in to our media platforms on YouTube, on, what's on, social, on Facebook, and all other channels. The messages are there, but it's always better if we come here physically and listen from, the, from, the, from our Lord. I'm going to invite every one of us to stand up for our opening prayer. Kind and blessed Father, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for enabling us to come here. We pray that you accept our worship this evening. For this is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. I also I ask that you keep standing as we sing our opening hymn, which is our theme song for the entire week. 264, O Faith of Our Fathers. Thank you.
request we all find somewhere to kneel for our pastoral prayer. Let's pray. Our kind and loving Father, it is us again, Lord Father. We thank you for the gift of life you've given us. We thank you for your grace. It is your grace which has enabled us not to be in hospital, not to keep hungry this week, Lord Father, not to be mourning and crying. It is your faith, it is your grace which has enabled us to be here alive and kicking. So we thank you for your grace. We thank you for the gift of life which you've given us, Lord Father. We also thank you for the life of our friends, relatives, brothers and sisters, everywhere, wherever they are, Lord Father. Please accept our thanksgiving, Lord Father. We pray at this time that you forgive us our trespasses, you cleanse us with your blood, Lord Father. Please wash away our sins, we pray and plead to you. And write our names in the book of life, dear Lord Father, so that when you come back with your kingdom, we may be able to join you and live with you forever. Please, when the devil attempts to tempt us and drive us into sin, Father, we pray that you protect us and remind us of your grace. Lord Father, we have personal needs among us here as students who are seeking knowledge, Lord Father. Please, as they study, Give them the knowledge and understanding that comes only from you, Lord Father. And please concentrate their minds to whatever they are doing. We pray that you provide them with school fees, tuition, Lord Father, meals and everything, so that your name may be glorified. I pray for the sick. Kindly touch them. You are the great physician. You healed the lepers. You he Father, we pray that even at this time, you also manifest yourself in our lives. Heal us, heal those who are sick, our relatives. Lord Father, we pray that you renew our health, Lord Father. We pray for our spiritual lives. Sometimes we go off tangent, Lord Father, but we pray that you continue guiding us back, Lord Father, growing us spiritually and developing us, Lord Father, into the Christians you want us to become. At this time, Lord Father, I put the preacher of the evening before you and the entire week of prayer, Lord Father, kindly bless whichever activity is happening here. Bless the organizers, bless the activities, bless whoever is listening in, Lord Father, and whoever is serving. Please answer all of our individual prayers, we pray, Lord Father. And at the end of the day, we pray that you yourself may touch people's hearts, Lord Father, those who have never accepted you as their personal savior, so that they may accept you. Those who are meandering, Lord Father, so that they may focus rightly and on you, Lord Father. I pray that you bless our online congregation, whoever is listening in virtually, wherever they are, Lord Father. Please enable them to focus on your word. Please answer their individual prayers, Lord Father. They seek out there, Lord, I put them before you. Please heal them, we pray, Lord Father. Those who are hungry, we pray that you provide them with what to eat. Those who don't know how tomorrow is going to end and goes to move. Father, we pray that you manifest yourself in their lives and they may see a miracle this evening, Lord Father. I pray you answer all our individual prayer requests. I pray that you walk with us, Lord Father. I pray that you give us hope in whichever situation we may be facing and going through. It is only you who understands and reads what's inside our minds, Lord Father. I pray in Jesus' name that you may be able to rescue us from whatever situation which is disturbing us, Lord Father, which is bothering us, which is stressing us, Lord Father. For the parents, I put before you their children, Lord Father. The term is ending, the semester is ending, and the worries are starting to set in, Lord Father. It is you who gave those parents the children they have. And we know that even those children, whoever is seeking for school fees, is a child of you. So I pray in Jesus' name that you may provide, 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 dear Lord Father, and drive away all the stresses and worries of our lives. We pray that you continue being with us. We pray that you hasten the feet of those who are still on their way. Bless each one of us here, Lord Father. Bless our leaders. 
bless our neighbors, bless the congregation, bless whoever is serving you in each, in each capacity, Lord Father. And above all, Lord Father, I put before you the preacher. Use him mightily. Give him the words, Lord Father. Give him the confidence. And may his wo wo message, which he gets, is getting from you, fall on a fertile ground, fall on our hearts, transform us for the better, Lord Father. For this is our humble prayer, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. I request those who have just come in to get chairs and come closer so that we may worship together mightily. At this time, I'm inviting our visiting choir, Musda Choir, to come and bless the Lord with a special item.
evening, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Our scripture reading will come from the book of 1 John, chapter 4, and verse 8. 1 John, chapter 4, verse 8. And it reads, Whoever does not love, does not know God. For God is love. Whoever does not love, does not know God. For God is love. I invite the Muslim Church Choir to give us another special item.
Good evening, children of God. God is good and all the time. We want to welcome all of you to our worship experience this evening. A special welcome to our online audience. We want to thank you if you brought a visitor this evening. Did anyone bring a visitor? May brought visitors. Mosda Choir escorted me this evening. Brother Isaac, you brought a visitor? Okay. Hey, the Muzda Choir. Okay, they came because of you. <laughs> Maybe you also brought your dad. We are happy to see Isaac's dad and mommy around. Uh, we want to thank God for uh, the youth department, the youth uh, leader, young adult leader, together uh, with the, the entire team that has organized the Youth Week of Prayer. We want to appeal to you to be joining us every evening as we study the Word of God. On Sabbath, we're going to be having baptism. So we appeal to you, in case you have anybody who would like to get baptized, you can start registering as we plan uh, accordingly. Uh, Muzda, we want to thank you for that wonderful item. Like we have always said, always be visiting your mother church. Why? Because in not many years from now, you'll end up here. You'll be like Dr. Chikanga playing the piano an associate of Mosda, you'll become elders' wives, you'll become pastors' wives, uh, what else? You'll become uh, young adult leaders. It's not going to be in that position forever, so you have to come here and you have to get used to what happens here. You'll become choristers, the team that has been choristering here. Not many years from now, you'll be here. You'll be operating the camera because Bill very soon will become an elder and he'll no longer stand on the camera. We want to pray and get into the word of the Lord. Uh, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to your presence this evening, thanking you, Lord, for the gift of life. We want to ask you, Lord, to touch our brain cells to understand these words. They may seem so tough, so bitter. They may hurt us. But we know, Lord, they are all rooted in love because you first loved us and you sent your only son to die for us on the cross. In case there is anyone who came feeling discouraged, Lord. May they leave this place with hope that whatever they are going through is just a phase of life. In case there is anyone who came to this place with a burden, may they leave it at the feet of Jesus because we know that you care for us. This is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our subject of discussion this evening has a title, Rooted in Love. Rooted in Love. On Sabbath, when we began the Youth Week of Prayer, I tried to explain to you the meaning of love. But for the benefit of our friends who have just joined us this evening, and maybe those who have just joined us online for the very first time, on Sabbath I say that love is a feeling you feel when you feel something you've never felt before. Love is a feeling you feel when you feel something you've never felt before. Love is also a strong affection, a strong attraction towards somebody or something. It's very unfortunate now that the world has gone crazy. That a man like me, I don't know what happens. In my right senses, I look at the young adult leader, Alex Galanz, and I start admiring and I say, I like your muscles. I like your eyes. I like your skin complexion. And deep down inside me, I feel we can end up together. Craziness. Craziness. When we were growing up, we used to see a cock chasing a hen. And we used to ask our mother, why is it that this cock this is chasing a hen? And whenever it would run around, it would rotate around like this, like this, like this. And you know, sometimes children ask hard questions and the parents have to answer. So my mother was very sharp, and she told us that whenever you see that seguanga, that cock running around and rotating around the hen, it's trying to tell the hen that I'm going to buy for you a big gomez. Of course, later on, we grew up and understood why it was doing that. Now, if hens know that it's a male one goes to a female one, what about us today? 
People are crazy. People have run mad. Actually, if you're here, if you're a young person, and inside you, you never feel an attraction towards somebody of the opposite sex. Before this week ends, we are going to pray, with you, pray for you with Pastor Chigundu. At least there should be something inside of you that tickles you. That moment when you feel as if you, you're feeling hungry, as if you're feeling headache, as if something is not clear, you want to talk to somebody, until you sit close to that person is when you feel good. When the person appears, that all of a sudden things change. You know, it becomes tricky if you've been singing together in the choir and you've been in love. We pray that the relationships end up at the altar. They end in marriage. Because if they don't work out, you've been singing soprano, he has been singing bass, standing behind you, singing wonderful love of God. If you ch chuck each other, it becomes hard. Now, what does it mean to be rooted in love? I try to find out the meaning of this word, to be rooted. To be rooted means to be established deeply. To be rooted means to be established firmly. Like these plants you see here. For them to be strong, for them to thrive, for them to get the minerals needed, they have to get roots which go down to look for the water, to look for the nutrients. Now, even us as Christians, we need to be rooted in love. It should be the motivating factor. It should be the only thing that keeps us moving. The other synonyms of being rooted are entrenched, settled, secure. There are people who are secure in their relationships. And there are those who are so insecure to the extent that if they see you talking to another person, immediately they will ask, why were you talking to that person? Why were you looking at her in such a manner? But if you are secure, by the way, young people, do you, do you think that you'll be with your spouse all the time? No. There are times you take the whole week. They are not with you. Now for us to go and preach, you can go for a camp meeting, camp meeting after camp meeting, the entire month you're not with the person. So if you're insecure, you'll imagine her. Where did she go? She went to the saloon. And nowadays men are the good people who braid hair. He that men touched, that man touched her hair. And you're insecure. Now to be rooted means that you're secure, you're settled. Come what may, I'm going to do whatever is in my ability to make the other person happy. To be rooted or to be established in love means that it is the most important reason for your existence. It is the core value above all else. Now, since we have understood what rooted means, let's go to the other part of love. I explained the, the first part, what love is. But for you to understand what love is, we have to go to the Greek language. Our sister read us a text there in First John chapter 4 and verse 8. I want to pick it up from verse 7. First John chapter 4, let's pick it up from verse 7. This is a man who has experienced love firsthand and is writing from experience because he has experienced that kind of love with the time he has spent with Jesus. And he says, dear friends, let us love one another for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Then verse 8, it says, Whoever does not love does not know God. Why? Because God is love. That the very definition of love is God. This is how God showed his love amongst us. He sent his only son to die for us. Into the world that we may live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but he first loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Now, John is trying to break down for you to understand what it means to love somebody. It means to sacrifice with the little money that you have. You want the other, path, other person to be happy. So you make sure out of the little money, you plan something. Please. If you've never been in love, listen to this very well. Take note of important days. Important days like birthdays, anniversaries. If you're in a relationship, if you're married, if you're in a relationship, what will give you more mileage? If you even remember the day when you met, 
Young men, have you heard? If you remember the day you've met, when the relationship began, may I remember ours, 16th December 2012. That is when they accepted the pastor. Now you... <laughs> now let's go back to love for you to understand the types of love. In the Greek language, there are around four words used for love. The first one is agape. Agape, the common one we know, is the unconditional love. The love that goes on loving, even when the person has become unlovable. There are things that we do to ourselves. That's why when God is talking about loving us, there are things you as a person, you may do intentionally or unintentionally. And you become unlovable among the church members, among the congregation, among your family members. If you are given tuition and you misused it, your parent can quarrel. They can even beat you. They can even disown you. If you brought somebody home who they don't like, that's the same thing can happen. But God continues to love us. Despite all that we do, still we go to him and ask for forgiveness. Imagine if he was taking record of each time he has forgiven us. And he would remind us like how we do, but I forgave you last time. You've done the same thing. Don't you learn? Now, in John 3.16, this is the epitome of love. And we are told this is the most common verse, the most famous verse, that for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him may not what? Perish, but have eternal life. Now listen to that very well. That for God so loved that he gave. That means you can't be in a relationship. You can't be in marriage. You can't be in a relationship with God if you're not willing to give, if you're not willing to sacrifice your time. You can give without loving. But you can't love and you don't give. You should be willing to sacrifice your time. You can't claim to be so busy for somebody. There are people who claim to be so busy. You call them, they say, hello, let me first shut the fridge. Then I talk to you. Then you know that you're not important to them. Have you ever heard such people? Now that is agape love. The love that even Paul talks about in Romans chapter 5 verse 8 that it was while we were still sinners that God shows his love for you and me. We were still sinners. God thought about you and me and he sent his son to die for you and me. Imagine such a scenario in your fallen state but God is thinking how do I rescue this person? That is agape. Agape, a love that goes on loving even when the person has become unlovable. The other one is phileo. Phileo is P-H-I-L-E-O. Phileo. That is brotherly love. Brotherly love, for you to understand it, you have to go to John chapter 21. John chapter 21 and verse 15. When Jesus is speaking to Peter, he uses a number of words which Peter could not understand well. John chapter 21 verse 15. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than this? By the way, you need to find out what they were eating. They had just finished eating fish. Jesus had been served breakfast. Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Listen to Jesus' response. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Verse 16, again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord... You know all things. You know that I love you. How many times has Jesus asked Peter? Three times. In the English language, the word used for the love is the same. But if you go to the Greek text, Jesus is asking Peter, Peter, do you agape me? And Peter asks, I agape, answers, I agape you. The second time, Jesus asks Peter, Peter, do you agape me? Peter answers, I agape you. The third time when Jesus asks, Peter, do you agape me? He answers, 
but he doesn't use the word agape. He, say, he uses phileo. And he says, I do not only agape you, but I phileo you. That is brotherly love. The third one is toje. Stoje is S-T-O-R-G-E. S-T-O-R-G-E. That is toje. That is parental love. Parental love. Some of our parents sacrifice a lot for us. Some of them may not have smartphones, but they make sure that you get the phone. Maybe they have never even flown in a plane, but they say, for the benefit of my son, my daughter, since there is the Pan-African Youth Congress in Nigeria, let me sponsor them such that in December they can go and also enjoy and learn. One time I had flu and I asked my mother what she used to do when I was a baby. What she told me challenged me. And she said that I used to get my mouth and I put it on your nose and pull out the mucus. How many men can do that? Very few. But women, they are willing to sacrifice because they love their children. That is toje, parental love. And some of us imagine, because we are human beings and the way we behave towards our children, we, behave, we think that even God is like that. You know the African mentality? When a child falls down, naturally, what do they say? Don't look there. Because if you look, the child will cry. Isn't it so? God is not like that. That if you have fallen down, if you have made a mistake, God will be there and say, Ah, let me not look today. God reaches out to you to lift you up out of your fallen situation. Now, parental love, that is toje. The last one is eros. Eros is E-R-O-S. Eros. This is romantic love. Like you know of erotic movies. It is more about the appearance. You look at people... You admire them the way they are created. You see somebody who is big, tall like me, getting a very tiny wife. That is love. You do not understand. And you know the attraction is totally different. By the way, you need to be very careful when talking to women and using the words. Never call a woman fat. They don't want, they don't want to be told that they are fat. Use better words. Better words like the image of God has increased. And there are those, some of us who like the, those with big images, heavy duty ones. And we are comfortable with those. There are some of us who like the portable ones who you can easily carry around. There are those who like the dark skinned ones, the light ones. One woman told me I can never get married to a light skinned man. I felt bad. Because I had gone with my CV. And she said, me, I'm not ready to compete with a light-skinned man. We are walking, going together to the supermarket. People will be looking at you instead of looking at me. And that is how I lost on that one. But what the good news is, there is always someone for each one of us. I expected an amen. You may be rejected, but there is always that special person for you. And when you finally get that person, when you are in love, you finally glow. The smile will be different. The way you react, the way you interact will be different. Why? Because you are in love. When you are in love, you feel like you want to tell the whole world. When you are in love, you may take even hours conversing on phone. You may escort the person. These guys use the words pushing. You may push the person and they push you back and you keep pushing them. Not pushing in a swing, but escorting them to where they are going to sleep. But you don't get tired. Now imagine if we had such love for one another. Imagine if we have such love in serving God. Imagine if we had such love in our families, in our homes, in our places of work. If you love what you're doing, no one should motivate you. Nobody should push you. Nobody should keep calling you and say you are needed here. Why? It is coming from deep down inside you. That's why John is saying, whoever does not love does not know God. Because God is love. Why are you doing whatever you're doing in the church? Do you want to be seen? Do you want to be appreciated? Do you want to be recognized? Do you want audience? Some of us want to serve when there are people. And you insist, if it is not divine service, I'm not going to sing. 
When did you put me to serve? Sabbath school, me. Me, do you know me? And you refuse. Who are you serving? You are serving God, not human beings. Once you understand that I am serving God and it's the motivating purpose, the, motivate, the your motivation is service. And you know, when you're praying and you're waiting until God to bless you, I know many of you have gone to restaurants. Do you know what waiters do? What do waiters do? Serve. So while you're waiting for God to bless you, do what waiters do. They serve. Serve wholeheartedly. Serve even if there are no people. Serve even if you're not being appreciated. Serve even if you're not the one in court. If you're not the one in leadership, please keep serving God. I want to challenge the people who are listening to me. I don't know if you have master guides here. I today have good news for you. I have kind words for you. I don't know if you remember when you wore the uniform. Do you remember when you were graduating? How excited you were. The investor ceremony, how you marched in to this place. This church has all, all, all over 150 master guides. Imagine if all of them turned up in uniform one Sabbath when you are welcoming the union president. It would be different. Imagine if all those master guides were active. The youth ministry would be totally different because the motivating factor is what? Love. I don't know how many SYLs we have. Senior youth leader. Do you know what that term means? Senior youth leader. Meaning that you're exceptional. You've gone above the ordinary people. The master guides are training the junior youth. The adventurers and pathfinders. The SYLs. They also have their part. Where they train the ambassadors and the young adults. Imagine if we had that fire within us. That's why this week we are saying the theme is reigniting the fire within us. By the way, do you remember the pledge that you made as a master guide? You said, loving the Lord Jesus, I will take an active role in adventurers, pathfinder, youth ministry, doing all that I can to take the gospel of Jesus Christ all over the world. Mark the words, loving the Lord. So the motivating factor is love. Not who is in control. Not who is the master guide president. Not who is the youth elder. Or who is the young adult leader. But because you love God. Now, I want to ask you. Unless you're telling me that the assignments you did as a senior youth leader, you were doing them to graduate. Unless you are doing them. Oh, oh, let's roll this the, a little bit. Maybe you didn't even do the assignments. And you got the work from other people. Because your motivating factor was to graduate. Now, because you didn't do your part, you don't know exactly what to do now. Please go back. Go back and revise. If there is need of refresh, refresher course, let's do it. Because we are tired of people who are slumbering. We need to see the fire within you. We need you to motivate the young people. We need you to pull the people because you promised, you pledged all over the church. When everybody was seeing, I promise, I pledge that loving the Lord Jesus, I will take an active role, not to sit back. Active means if things are not going on well, I don't sit back and I say, mm -hmm, let them fail. Active means I'll think, I'll go beyond the ordinary. By the way, do you remember the motto? What is the Pathfinder motto? Hey, my friends, what is the Pathfinder motto? The love of Christ constrains us or compels us. That love, it's the one that pushes you. That love, you remember, when you were going for hiking, when you were going for the commando course, that love that took you to the different camporees, that love is the one that we want back. If you are hurt by somebody, if you are hurt by words that were spoken, remember what love is. Paul says, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, talking about love, 
Because we need to be grounded in love. Once we understand what that means, our thought patterns will be different. Our motivation will be different. Because all that we do is because God first loved us. Paul speaks, and this is to all of us this evening, that if I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but have no love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. I don't know if you know what a cymbal is, but if you saw the brass band here, it's just thing that they just knock. And if you knock it without the band, the noise is, the, it's just noise. It's not good sound. So if whatever you do, there is no love, you're just like that thing. If I give, verse 3, all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Verse 4 says, love is patient. We need to learn to be patient with one another. We need to learn to understand that we come from different backgrounds. You have spent 30 years with your parents. You're meeting a 35-year-old and the two are coming together. Sometimes it is hard and you're forging life together. Sometimes people, where they have grown up from, things are done differently. When I met my wife, one time I wanted to surprise her and I realized that totally we have grown up from different backgrounds. Where I grew up from, there are things that we enjoy to eat. And among those things were eggplants. So I go to the supermarket one time, Sombe supermarket, Pastor Chigundu knows it, in Mukono. And I buy passion fruits, I buy oranges, I buy tomatoes, I buy carrots, I buy fresh peas. I also enter the supermarket, I buy basmati rice, underline basmati rice, if you know the cost. I get home, I start rushing put the rice in the rice cooker, blend the juice, boil the peas. I was working at Hilton. And sometimes we had those long meetings that would go beyond 10 p.m. So she calls and I tell her I'm still in a meeting while I'm at home preparing the things. So I set everything and put off the lights and I wait for her, hoping that she'll be happy with my surprise. When she comes back, switches on the light, she sees the surprise. Of course she was happy. So I served her the juice. I took off the shoes from her legs. Because of the long day, I had to massage the legs. Please, get to the tips. <laughs> and I served I served the rice and the peas. Then she asked me, what are these black things? And I told her, those are eggplants, biringanya. And say, what are they doing in the peas? I said, in, I thought when you put the eggplants, the sauce becomes heavy. Heavy. She got a fork and extended the peas on the side. And ate three. Three forks. One, two, three. And she was done. I was hurt. Very hurt. The time I had put in, while cooking, I had even burnt my hand. Blended juice. I bought even expensive rice. Basmati rice. And she told me, please listen. Where I grew up from, we do not eat eggplants. We do not eat biringanya. We don't eat ntula. Number two, we do not eat mukene. Silver fish. Mukene is food for dogs. Number three, I do not eat leftovers. Yet at our home, ha, ah, leftovers of <laughs> potatoes and cassava eh, with dry tea. Hey. Fast forward, I come back home and she has cooked posho and biringanya, only eggplants. And I ask, what happened? There wasn't money. And she says, no, I love these eggplants. I wish you buy them more. What had changed her? Love. Love. The person who used not to eat eggplants now eats them. Even the leftovers of cassava and sweet potatoes, she no longer throws them, she keeps and she warms in the microwave. Yet before it was different. What changed her? Love. Dear youth, 
dear elders, dear pastors, let us be patient with one another. Let us show people love. When you show the people love, it is contagious. If a person is so hard to deal with, get the person closer to you, dear young adult leader. There are some people here who are so hard to deal with, who are giving you a hard time. Get them closer to you. Show them love. Don't get out a stick and always just... <clears throat> it will be hard. Give them love. Love will change people. Husbands who are here, are there wives who are so hard to deal with? Splash love. There are wives who are so hard to deal with. They control men. Sometimes they even beat them. But because they are good Adventists, they won't talk. They are tortured. They are hurt. But they can't go away. Give them love. Paul is saying love is patient. Let us be patient with one another in the church. Let us be so grounded in love. You'll be amazed with what we can do as this congregation. Pastor Chigundu, yesterday I challenged the people here and I told them this is a zone headquarter. Do you know what it means? The newest zone in Central Uganda Conference. The newest zone in Uganda Union. That means the very best should come from here. Pathfinders. The Pathfinder Director. Who is he? Alex, my girl, take this message to him. We want to see pathfinders raising flags every Sabbath here. This is the headquarter. Is there any harm in that? Hey, you people, you're not answering. Is there harm in that? At Hilton High School, we used to raise flags every day. Now here it's only on Sabbath. What is wrong with that? We need to see the vibrancy of the youth ministry. We are tired of people who only go for youth conventions only on Sabbath to take photos and post all over social media. We are tired of that. We want people who are active. We want people to move all over, to come and get you to go and train them. Unless you just copy, copy your assignments. But if you really did those assignments, you can't sit back when something is not moving on well. If something is wrong, come and correct it. We are tired of people who are just bickering, rumor-mongering, gossiping, talking about the young adult leader. Please come and put things right. Why? Because the motivating factor is love. Remember what you saw here. You said loving the Lord Jesus, not loving the pastor or loving the elder. Love is pushing you. As we draw to the end, listen to what he says. Love it does not envy. You're happy for other people who are achieving. You celebrate them. Whatever they accomplish, celebrate them. Be happy for them. We have many people who have been graduating. Communication department, we want to see. Celebrate them on our social media platforms. Love does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. You try. Even when you feel like you want to give the person your peace of mind, you remember, love is not easily angered. You hold your peace. You have typed an entire paragraph. You want to put that person in their right position. Then you delete everything and you say it is okay. That is maturity. That is maturity. That's why Paul says, in verse 11, he says, When I was a child, I thought like a child. Now the motivation is love. I've matured. My thought patterns, my actions, they have shown that I've grown. If I am a master guide, I should behave like a master guide. I'm an expert. I, sh I, I should show these young ones what should be done. We are having the Pan-African Youth Congress in Nigeria. Elder Elisha, for the love of God, this church has capacity to take more delegates. We need to leave this place in a big way. As we go to the airport, we need to be flagged off by our zone leader. Kampala Central Church delegation going to Nigeria. How many have registered? We need to wake up from the slumber, you people. I don't know if you have the fire that I have within me. I feel we can do much more. 
communication department. I feel we can release devotions on a daily basis here. The people should be following us because we have quality here. We have the potential. We need to reignite that fire within us. Whatever we do, remember we are the center. Adventist center. The union headquarters are here. Do you know what that means? It means a lot. Friends, let's try to summarize. Verse 13, verse 8. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, these will cease. Love does not keep record of wrongdoing. There are people who have hurt us. Please, let go. There are people who have done unimaginable things to us. Let go of that. To be rooted in love is to look beyond the surface appearance, to see the inner beauty in others, often disfigured by sin. You look at somebody, what they have done, what they have said to you, but because you're rooted in love, you forgive them. You ask yourself, what would Jesus do if he was in my position? He would do better. He would let go. People would have wanted to throw all thrones to them. Jesus says, it is okay. I forgive you. Neither do I condemn you, but go and sin no more. That means Jesus expects us to do better. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 says, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of the glorious riches he may strengthen you with power, through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. I pray that you may be rooted and established in love. Amen. I want to challenge you, children of God, in all spheres of life, in the various departments that we have in the church, in the congregation, in your families. Remember the words of this beautiful hymn, that hark the voice of Jesus calling, who will go and work today? In case you've had ex ex excuses, that the fields are white and harvests are waiting, who will bear the sheaves away? Loud and long the master calleth, rich reward he offers free. Who, who will answer gladly that here I am? Lord, send me. And says, if you cannot cross the oceans and the heathen lands explore, you can find a heathen near you because you love that person. You love that neighbor. You want them to understand Jesus. You want them to get better. If you cannot give your thousands, you can give the widow's might. And the list you give for Jesus will be precious in his sight. If you cannot be the watchman standing high on Zion's wall, pointing out the path to heaven, offering life and peace to all, that with your prayers and with your bounties, you can do what heaven demands. You can be like faithful Aaron, holding up the prophet's hand. I want the pianist to come here. We sing this beautiful hymn as we prepare to pray. The last stanza says, let none of you idly saying, there is nothing I can do. That while the sons of men are dying and the master calls for you, take the task he gives you gladly. Let him work. Let his work your pleasures be. Answer quickly when he calleth that here I am, send me. Is there anyone who wants to say, here I am, send me. I want to go in love. I want to be rooted in love. Join me as we sing this beautiful hymn. And I'll invite pastor to offer us a prayer.
Eternal, gracious, loving Father in heaven. God, we want to thank you so much this evening and for this entire week. God, you have spoken to us, reminding us of that beautiful gift of love. God, you yourself, you are love. And everyone who lives in love lives in you. Thank you for the message we have received through our pastor. Indeed, all of us are here because of love. Help us to live in love as we live in you, Lord. Help us, Lord, to walk in love every day. Please, loving Father. And each day of our lives. We are praying, Father, that you may give us your power. To walk, God, and choose to walk in obedience to this command that says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Help us to love you, God, every day. Help us, Lord, to live as per your statutes. And you said also, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Help us love fellow men, friends we work with, friends we study with, fellow church members, our spouses, our children. Help us, Lord, to love them. When others are challenging to want to love, God, we pray that you give us the grace and the endurance to love them well in any way some may never desire to be loved but help us lord give us that heart to show them that love even when they don't want it because god you first loved us it is not us who loved you first you loved us and here we are to reciprocate this love to you praying that even those people who may never be who may never have a desire to be loved, that they may reciprocate resp that love. Thank you, Lord, for your great love to die on the cross for all our sins and to raise again to life. God, we are so much, so much overwhelmed by such great love and compassion. What can we do to our neighbors? For our neighbors. How can we express ourselves, Lord? Please, we pray this evening, this entire week, God. Please help us. Help us to be like babies. They love without any condition. Help us in our state of faith, just like babies. Help us to have this faith grow every day. Please, God, 
We have so many opinions around us. Help us to waver some of them that may bar us from expressing true love to those around us. Part of this love is sharing truth, God. We pray that Father have mercy upon all of us that we may be able to share this truth. You do not want anyone, anyone to perish. It is upon me, upon my brethren here, the young people here, to reach out and share this truth that they have known about you. Telling somebody, telling them about this love. It is a sign to show that we are maturing in faith. Please help us to love those people. Give us the strength, Lord, not to worry about people pleasing them, but to be truly loving by sharing your word with them. Please, God, this evening and all these days we are here in your presence. Help us sometimes to be tolerant. Help us sometimes, you know, to leave things the way they are. Not be, you know, picky picky over this and that. But just to show love. The way you are loving us even in our own sinful ways. But you are still calling upon us to come. It is you to make us perfect. Thank you, God. Because you loved us. Thank you because you love me even now. And you cannot laugh at us even when we fall. Well, as the human being will turn the other side and laugh even when somebody falls, for you, you do not laugh at us. Help us also never to laugh at anyone who falls. Rather be there to help them stand up and move forward. Help us, Lord, to live from a place of love so that others may know that you are the Savior of this world who loves them and gave yourself for them. Thank you for this time as you embrace all of us with your love. For this is our humble prayer and submission this evening. In that mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. I want to thank the pastor so much for such a beautiful sharing. I really want to thank you, friends, for turning up in big numbers. Please may you make it a point even tomorrow. Please, we are here up to Sabbath. Please don't forget to reach out to that friend of yours, even when they abuse you. Yeah. Just remind them, friends who are online, I've checked on Facebook, you are there on YouTube, you are there. Share those links with those friends, even after this message, keep sharing, keep sharing, keep sharing. You never know, somebody may need this message. Please kindly do that. And then don't forget your interests. Interests, these are the people you desire to know Christ. Please kindly be talking to them. We have a book here that has been uh, uh, printed out, we shall be sharing with. Uh, it is a compilation of uh, the Discover Guides. You can share this book with those people. By the way, it is 3,000. If you love them, come and buy that book. 3,000. You give that person and follow up. How far have you gone? Chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. Let people know about Christ. Please kindly do that. Then invite them tomorrow. It's Wednesday. The week is running very fast. The other day it will be Sabbath. Keep inviting them. And on Sabbath, come with them. Like the pastor said, we shall be having baptism on Sabbath. Please kindly do share that love message with those friends. May God bless you. Please see you tomorrow. The choir, that was a beautiful uh, piece of music. How I wish tomorrow you can sing. And on Thursday, Friday, and Sabbath. It is my invitation to you. Please kindly be there. May God bless you all. See you tomorrow, same time, same place.